Next topic, we will invite uh, Professor King again to give us a talk up about the uh, full endoscope TD. <laughs> Professor King, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, again. Uh, I'm Hyun from uh, South Korea. Uh, this time, my topic is the endoscopic transformer lumbar interval fusion. This is my curriculum by 10 disclosure. Yes, uh, we are already talking that the endoscopic spine surgery developed so much, and nowadays we're going to the endoscope fusion generation. And uh, uh, first, we talking that the why we doing the endoscope fusion surgery because of that. Uh, before we performing so many kind of the minimal invasive fusion surgery, and also can take a good uh, clinical result. But nowadays, uh, uh, some uh, uh, many doctors try the endoscope fusion surgery. But firstly, checking the the rationale of the endoscope fusion surgery. But uh, in my clinical experience, I have uh, some checking, the, some find the, some advantage of the endoscopic lumbar interval fusion surgery. But the firstly, checking that it has uh, some increased disc height. And uh, I think that maybe it has a uh, two point of the, uh, uh, related to the increasing disc height. First, it may be some serial dilation. And uh, second thing, maybe some relation to the uh, some sympathetic di uh, disruption uh, due to the some paraspinal muscle, some contract due to the some uh, sympathetic connection, and after uh, some during the process, maybe the disconnection maybe make us some uh, increasing the disc height. And also, you can see the some case of the uh, in my uh, endoscopic fusion surgery. I, I always checking the some during uh, some uh, disc resection. The disc height increases so much, and the cage insertion is more easy. You can see here this case also can uh, postoperatively. You can see the disc height increase so much. And also some another case, you can see this case uh, uh, not easy to increase the disc height, but after operation you can see the disc height increase so much. And also six months later the uh, disc height is still preserved well, and some another case also can increase in, in the disc height is sufficiently after operation, and six months later it is also preserved well. And also, second advantage will be the uh, the real advantage of the endoscopic fusion surgery is uh, I think that maybe this is a real advantage. Uh, we can see the the end plate rear under the view and uh, can uh, uh, denusion of the end plate uh, from the uh, vertebral body and can preserve the end plate near completely. Uh, this is a real advantage of the of the endoscopic fusion surgery. You can see here. Uh, the denotion of the end plate without damage the vertebral body, and uh, you can see some clear view. And it have a uh, two big advantage. One is that uh, some preserved, uh, decreasing the substance. First, the second thing is uh, increasing the disc uh, fusion rate, uh, and also fusion rate also some related to the 3D printing kg because of uh, 3D printing kg already uh, published the uh, fusion rate very high, and if you keep the two point uh, uh, preserved the end plate under the endoscope view, and second things in insert uh, the 3D print printing kg, you can take a real good fusion rate. Uh, yes, uh, you can see here that uh, some of cases of postoperatively and six months later. And this is another case, postoperative and six months later. This is another case of postoperative and six months later. And this is another case of postoperative and six months later. You can see here the all cases have no substance of the vertebral body and the keep the uh, disc height still well. And also, we already well known that uh, uh, this is my cases of the 
uh, op, uh, transformer open transformer interval fusion cases. Six months later, we usually catch the, some substance. Uh, but uh, anyway, the uh, long term follow up, the fusion rate uh, can take. But anyway, during uh, some of cases have uh, some substance, and uh, some substance can make uh, some decrease in the fusion rate. But in the uh, endoscopy fusion cases, you can see here immediate post-operative and six months later. And uh, these cases are not, uh, actually this case is two level, uh, CV also process cases uh, because I perform the uh, cement augmentation. But in spite of the also process, six months later you can see uh, still uh, have no substance and can take a uh, rare fusion. And also, this case is, uh, firstly, I insert the uh, cage some, well, 14 insertion, because uh, some uh, substance here uh, at the immediate uh, after operation. But six months later, you can see here, no more aggravation of substance. It's meaning that uh, keep the end plate under the endoscope view and uh, insert a 3D painting, printing cage can take a real fusion rate very well. Uh, this will be the real uh, advantage. It will be the real advantage of the endoscope fusion surgery, and also uh, because of that, uh, this endoscope pressures with uh, a radio frequency ablation can make uh, some increasing this height. You can see here the uh, the, and also can performing the uh, serial dilation to here, like this, and insert KG like this. Because of that, uh, you can see here the in, in severe uh, lateral wedging state, but uh, uh, the correction is very easy. And you can see here some another correction. Uh, this uh, same patient, you can see here the correction is very well. I think that maybe, but uh, still uh, not a uh, scientific basis not confirmed. But uh, so many of my clinical experience, uh, experience I already experienced so many wear correction and wear preserved end plate and wear fusion. Because of that, uh, in the future, maybe I think that maybe the rationality of the endoscope fusion surgery, not only minimally invasive, uh, minimally invasive approach, uh, will be. Uh, with the preserved end plates uh, and the uh, wear fusion rates uh, will be the uh, real rationale of the end, uh, endoscope fusion and so it will be in the uh, uh, next generation. Uh, uh, here we should now, because of that uh, nowadays, uh, uh, first, we checking the uh, uh, actually the fusion surgery can divide the uh, anterior approach and posterior approach. But actually, in endoscope fusion surgery is still now performing the posterior approach. But first, we checking the what is the uh, uh, surgical consideration. We already well known that uh, we a resection of the inferior articular process and uh, some part of the superior articular process. Uh, and then uh, insert the K2 through there. But nowadays we uh, introduce three uh, kind of endoscopic posterior fusion surgery technique. One is extraframinal, and one is transframinal, and one is intraspinal. Actually, uh, uh, using the Kempin's triangle uh, is the extraframinal approach, and uh, 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 th uh, through the transframinal approach will be the rear uh, transframinal approach. And uh, uh, here, but uh, we should consider to there, the, uh, I already mentioned that the two uh, uh, realize the endoscopic spine surgery in, in the fusion surgery also same. First, we get the safety and the success. And because of that, uh, we should check in here where is the safety point? We already well known that the, this dorsal root ganglion is very dangerous and also it connected to the sympathetic channel and it make uh, sometimes a very serious uh, uh, symptom to the patient after uh, it may be damaged. And also, dural damage also, some, uh, if we are to here so much, that also make uh, some serious complication. Because of that, if we are 
we should consider that the, what is the most good approach to this, this, this three different kind of approach. Because of that, I chose uh, among them this, uh, com uh, like same with the conventional transform approach. But uh, actually, before uh, uh, developing the endoscopic drill, the, uh, actually this approach is not easy because of that uh, many doctors try the cam using the Kambin's triangle. But unfortunately, through the Kambin's triangle has uh, some limitation of the, it only have uh, some indication limited. Also, uh, some another is uh, some uh, chance of uh, dorsal to ganglion damage. Is uh, this too big? Dip, uh, big it will be big issue because of that. Uh, after developing the endoscopic drill, uh, if we can possible, um, we can uh, performing the more safety surgery and the more successful surgery will be uh, uh, will give the more good clinical result to, to the patient. Because of that, I choose this approach. Uh, it's a, a surgical techniques of my uh, operation, protection and insert, and uh, change the, the angle. And then finally insert a, a, uh, insert a square. Uh, if we doing like this process, we can perform the near all kind of the uh, fusion, uh, degenerative fusion surgery because of that uh, it can possible decompression uh, sufficiently. It can possible uh, some restoration can possible in spite of the endoscope pressures. Yes, uh, I think that maybe not. Uh, I perform near 50 cases of the uh, endoscopic fusion surgery, and uh, um, uh, I uh, searched the, uh, near 20 cases uh, followed more than six months. And uh, there, we can take a, a, a all patient have a, a good to excellent clinical result. Also, there are some percentage of the uh, and those uh, bone chip uh, uh, into there is um, near 50% that is sufficient to, to take a fusion surgery. For example, you, if you can insert the, yeah, this case is also endoscope fusion cases. Because, uh, because of that, uh, we can insert to the endoscope bone chip through the working channel. Uh, we can insert the bone chip sufficiently to take a uh, endoscope fusion, uh, fusion uh, su uh, success. Uh, now uh, I will show uh, some of cases, uh, uh, some steps of uh, my endoscope fusion techniques. This case is L5 S1. It's make a spondylar recess with from the sternus cases. Uh, this post-operative view. Uh, this is uh, here is my uh, L5 S1. Also here L45 is here. Skin incision point is here. And the first docking the uh, skin the working channel to uh, serial dilation and firstly resection of the inferior articular process. Here at 5 s one resection of isthmus and uh, removal of the bone chip uh, if possible by one uh, one piece. Then can you can explore the uh, Inferior articular process here. Inferior articular process, superior articular process also resection uh, from uh, inferior part to, to lateral part. Here, resection to here, and take a bone chip by one piece. Then you can uh, exposure the safety uh, uh, transpraminal area and uh, resection of there. And here, um, also another important point is that uh, denotion of the end plate is very, very important. Not damage the uh, vertebral body, and only remover of the end plate by the. I'm used uh, some curved bending uh, probe. You can see here the bending probe and uh, denotion of the end plate from the bone and then limb. You can see here one more denotion. Then uh, we can insert the. Uh, now insert the bone chip through the working channel, the same working channel, and then insert uh, the serial dilation, and KG insert to here. Here, this process of the, uh, change the working channel more bigger uh, to insert the KG, and then checking the uh, height, and the firstly insert uh, uh, the KG, then 
some lever of the working channel because of the, it is already inserted into the disk space and then change the angle into insert some more After then, you check, uh, checking, insert uh, working channel uh, again, endoscope again, and then you can reposition of the cage to here. Then you can take uh, like this image. Yes, because of that, uh, I already mentioned that if we doing like this process, we can apply the, the all kind of the degenerative uh, lumbar uh, fusion cases. Uh, like the, this lateral raging case is more uh, simple cases. Uh, and the post-operative, you can see uh, where restoration. And also, the patient need uh, endoscope decompression and the restoration that also can possible together. And also, this patient need uh, 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 restoration and decompression and resection of the cyst all can possible by one step uh, under the view, endoscope view can possible. Resection of cyst and then cage insertion and then uh, postoperatively the patient uh, take a good clinical result. But also there, anyway, uh, and uh, all kind of uh, surgical approaches have a complication. Endoscope uh, surgery also have uh, some complications. Uh, this patient also can take a big uh, dural tear. But I already mentioned that in uh, in spite of the big dural tear, endoscope uh, approaches very uh, narrow approaches because of that uh, only insertion of patch to here, the patient have no problem. This two days late, uh, later, the patient walking is no problem. Yes, uh, uh, endoscopic spine surgery uh, uh, still some limitation of indication because of the uh, still a process, uh, ongoing state. But uh, I think that maybe endoscope fusion surgery, uh, if you can uh, perform the endoscope fusion surgery, we can spray the indication of the uh, endoscope surgery for uh, degenerative spine near more than 90% and Maybe in the future, I don't know. Uh, I can believe that the uh, one hundred percent anyway. Anyway, we can performing more than ninety percent can possible under the endoscopic spine procedures. But uh, we always checking the success of the surgery and safety of surgery. Please save the date. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Professor King. So we will discuss at uh, the last of the, the, this section. So finally, we will invite Professor Ito again to give us uh, another uh, issue uh, talking about the new PELIF method for decompressed degenerative spondylolisthesis. Professor Ito, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, there are three categories in endoscopic surgery. The first category is a fiber or a needle operation for mild degeneration. Uh, second category is decompression surgery, such as PED, MED for a disc herniation. MEL, PEL, PSLD, or UBE are used for stenosis. The third category is fusion surgery, which includes our original PED, MED, and others. A third category is fusion surgery for instability, degenerative disc disease, spondylolisthesis, and spondylolisthesis, etc. Each spine hospital developed two original fusion methods. One is microendoscopic diff, and the other is Pakistan's full endoscopic in the body fusion. Both original methods are indirect decompression and don't need canal invasion. Our developed MELIF and PELIF approaches are indirect decompression method. Uh, this figure shows other fusion approaches. 
Uh, this is PDIF approach. These approaches are for regular TDIF, PSLD diff, and UBE diff. SAP must be cut off. The spinal canal must be invaded, so dural damages tend to be occurred. These are XRIF, ORIF, and RIF approaches of which the good points are no canal invasion. Posterior muscle preserved. However, these methods have risks of damaging the intestines, ureters, and vessels. MRIF approach is from more lateral than t -lif. This approach is similar to the transfluminal method. The opposite side in Chijung is only to insert sextant plus uh, pedicle screws. It needs the compression of only lateral side of the SAP and total discectomy. The spinal canal is not invaded. However, not under continuous water irrigation, endoscopic view is not so clear. Uh, the original, other original approach, P leaf, is similar to M E leaf. A P leaf needs bilateral incision at camping the safety triangle. It needs no <coughs> canal decompression, so no dural damages and no internal organ damages. P leaf is clear vision and a continuous water irrigation and less invasive with each five incision less than one centimeter. Uh, fusion surgery has many complications. Since proof has much muscle detachment, it tends to cause not only post-operative muscle atrophy, but also adhesion to the dura mater and nerve damage. t -lift tends to cause nerve and dura damage. Since x lift retracts the psoas muscle, it tends to cause a full root policy and intestine rupture. Orif tends to cause ureter damage. Alif tends to cause vascular damage and ejaculation trouble. Uh, P lif complications are rare, but learning curve is steep. Overall procedure of P lif Step one, total discectomy through bilateral camping safety triangle under Pakistan's full endoscopy. Step two, the end plate should be scraped off. Step three, collect the harvest bone from the iliac using a terrifying, or artificial bone substitute is also useful. Uh, number four, intervertebral cage insertion. The cage packaged with bone chips is uh, inserted along the L-shaped retract slider, which protects the existing root. The expandable cage is de uh, delivered into an 8.5 millimeter outer tube. Fixation with screws. A hybrid cancerous facet screws are used for less instability cases. PPS and uh, PPS are digit fixation for much instability cases such as spondylolysis or spondylolysis. Our developed P leaf is recommended for DDD, spondylolysis, and instability. Total transfluminal discectomy is easily performed through bilateral safety cambium triangle. One or two cages are transmitted into the intervertebral space along the special designed L shaped carrier. In case of less instability, uh, we can use two facet screws requiring tiny incision. However, in case of much instability, such as spondylosis, uh, sorry, spondylolysis or spondylolysis, it needs to be fixed using more stable pedicle screws. Uh, total discectomy is performed. Sorry. Just a moment. Okay. Uh, Okay. Uh, it is important for bone fusion that the end plate should be scraped off the extent that light bleeding is observed. The cross outer sheath end plate cutter is an evolution of the conventional 7.5 millimeter dark bell outer sheath by rotating the thin surface layer of the hard end plate can be scraped off. 
the tip is sharpened at both ends of a 10 millimeter duck bill. Each has 45 uh, degrees blade. Another expansion, fine cutter, smoothes the remaining irregularity of the roughened end plate. First, it is inserted with the tip closed and is expanded in the disk space to, dis to uh, dissect the irregularities. Uh, the flexible diamond burr is useful to do drilling of the end plates under endoscopic view. Many instruments, the cross outer shears in the plate cutter can scrape the end plate as a thin layer while rotating under endoscope. You can also check under image. The L-shaped retract slider inserts an interbody cage while protecting the existing loot. These are PPS insertion devices that can be used with conventional T-leaf. It's important to reasonably remove the entire intervertebral disc and end plate. First, remove the intervertebral disc from the ipsilateral side with forceps under the endoscope. A flexible diamond burr helps to shave the end plate within a narrow outer sheath. Then rotate the cross outer sheath end plate cutter and scrape the end plate thinly and actively. A surgeon or assistant stands on the contralateral side and decompress. In the same way as the ipsilateral side, remove the uh, intervertebral disc with forceps. By rotating the cross outer sheath end plate cutter, the shin surface layer of the hard end plate can be scraped off. Remove the scraped end plate with forceps. Finally, expansion fine cutter is inserted with the tip closed, and then the expanded tip can smooth the remaining irregularities on the end plate. Uh, before placing the pedicle screw, cancerous bone from the iliac crest is harvested using a terrifying via a five millimeter intrusion. The peak cage filled up with hydroxyapatite collagen hybrid is transmitted through one portal. The mixed allograft, a local bone with super poor phosphate calcium, is padded from the other portal. Two cannulated facet screws are fixed from one incision. How to insert the cage? This figure shows the relationship between the cage insertion pathway and the existing root. An L-shaped retract slider is inserted into a 7.5 millimeter outer tube. Round the corner of the L-shaped retract slider protects existing root. A bullet-shaped cage with filled cancerous bone, cancerous bone chip is impacted along the L-shaped retract slider. A rise interleaf system is also a very good method. After partial foraminotomy, expandable cage is delivered into an 8.5 millimeter outer tube. The facet screws are fixed for less instability, such as modic change, DDD, and L5S1 foraminal stenosis. PPS are used for much instability, such as spondylolisthesis and spondylolisthesis. Even in the case of PPS, the endoscopic portal and the lower PPS portal can be shared, so it is limited to five small incisions. Uh, less instability cases are fused using hybrid facet screws method. Indicated case one is modic type one, change that is confirmed with T2 high intensity lobe MRI image. Degenerative disc disease shows chronic low back pain with intradiscal massive vacuum that temporary pain relief is achieved with a disc uh, block. Indicated case three is when bilateral foraminal stenosis due to decreased disc uh, height, 
is accompanied by low back pain and radiculopathy. Uh, two transfacet screws are easily loosened, and each translamino screw tends to interfere. The new original hybrid system eliminates the advantage and uh, this advantage of easy loosening or interfering by combining a transfacet screw and a translamino screw. Degenerative disc disease occurs continuous chronic disabled pain for a few months in the situation such as no effect of painkillers, rehabilitation, and tranquilizers, a temporary effective of intradiscal injection. Pactanous endoscopic transraminal lumbar intervertebral fusion, P relief, is recommended. Uh, this 75 old male has continuous bilateral anterior side pain and severe low back pain. He had also a one vertebral uh, plasty due to severe osteoporosis before. PDF was performed at L34 with hybrid screw facet screw, uh, facet, facet screw fusion. Uh, CT shows right trans facet screw. Left trans lamina screw was inserted from right side through the lamina to left. Next, this 76 years old woman had severe low back pain and moderate bilateral lower leg numbness with 300 meter intermittent claudication. Images show L45 degenerative disc changes and mild spinal canal stenosis, but no instability. PD fine hybrid facet screw fixation was performed and her symptoms and MRI improved completely after two years. A much instability cases are fused using digit Pakistanus pedicle screws method. Indicated case one is spongylosis, a spondylolysis accompanied with severe low back pain. Indicated case two is spondylolysis <coughs> in more than milding level two, or severe low back pain in even if milding level one. How to insert PPS? There are three key points of needle advantage. Uh, PPS Entry pathway must be decided and uh, collect AP and lateral fluoroscope floor image views. The jam CD needle entry point is at the outer quarter, outer upper quarter of the pedicle and the AP floor view. The needle is set at the posterior line of the pedicle. As can be seen from the CD image, the tip of the needle is at the outside of the beginning point of the needle. PPS midpoint is, uh, is important. In AP view, the tip of the needle must be inserted till the mid medial line of the pedicle. In lateral view, the needle tip must be set at the posterior line of the and midpoint of pedicle. A CT also shows the same position. PPS terminal point, terminal position. The final target point of PPS is slightly lateral, the center of vertebra in AP view. In the lateral view, the needle tip is anterior one par three of the vertebra. In CT, a tip of the needle is slightly lateral the center of the vertebra and is one past three of the anterior. This case had uh, light sciatica and back pain during walk due to L45 degenerative spondylary stasis and instability at L45. After P lift, symptoms had disappeared. Uh, P lift case two. Uh, surgery time was 2.5 hours, blood loss was 30 milliliter. X-ray after surgery showed good collection uh, at L45. PPS system and cage were placed in a good position. In MRI actual views, spinal canal was moderately enlarged without direct decompression three months later. One year later, the spinal canal expanded further. Uh, PPS case three. 
There was five, uh, 51 women who suffered from severe low back pain and 400 meter intermittent claudication. One year after P relief, symptoms disappeared and MRI showed improvement of stenosis. This patient was 71 male. He had moderate back pain, 20 meter intermittent claudication, and severe light sciatica. CT showed light foraminal stenosis at L5S1. MRI showed also light L5 exiting root compressed. A P relief was performed. Light foraminotomy and insertion of the cage increased vertical distance of the foramen. This patient is a 51 year old male with spondylolisthesis. Expandable lumbar fusion device lies was inserted into the intervertebral space at a contracted height. When it is expanded in the disc space, the impact can lift the upper and lower end plates to the appropriate height. Post-operative images show good collection. There are two trouble fusion cases of cage migration. This was 69-year-old male. The cage was set in correct position just post-operation. One year later, the cage was migrated towards posterior left side. However, it was lucky. He had no symptoms and could walk even for one hour without pain. Second case was 71 years old woman who was suffered from 50, milli, uh, uh, 50 meter intermittent claudication. One year later, the cage was migrated towards posterior. Spinal canal was more compressed compared with preoperative MRI sagittal image. However, it was also lucky. She had no symptoms and could play tennis and ski. These cases were completely fused between the vertebral body, so no symptoms occurred even with spinal canal compression. If these cases will occur to any symptoms, we must perform division surgery. Conclusion of endoscopic fusion surgery, p is small bilateral incision and a continuous irrigation, clear vision, facet and muscle are preserved, enough bone transplantation, exiting root is protected by L retractor, no canal decompression in direct method, so no dural tear, no internal organ damage. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Ito. So that's uh it's it's not so we're going to talk about it because the time is a little bit late, so I think we can have a few minutes of talking about it. The first question is about the first question. The first question is about the first question. Do you have any questions? T.Guo号就是理事长报的这个题目哈，然后每次听都学到很多。那你一般如果说往左侧的concave side，从左侧放应该好放。那你如果碰到concave side放的话，上颌会比较大，然后要打在比较深吗？那效果怎么样？我想说问一下理事长的意见。呃，呃，其实很多伤口，哎，因为concave side吧，哎，不会一次画下来，就是一个一个跳这样子，因为那concave side四五朝下面，三四朝中间，二三朝上面，然后可能不一次画下来就画三道横的，啊，伤口就不会太大，这样的，哎，correction也是就是要把那个对侧的concave side啊，把它打穿，差差不多，你把它打穿就差不多了，啊，当然你打穿的话一定是对侧是比较紧，这时候cage对侧比较紧，啊，你在这一侧的话，对侧是这个cage你看是要稍微有点松。所以趴过来的话，你这一侧的话，再把它做compression，那结果都差不多。哎，对，谢谢。可不可以问一下李部长，你前面要准备几节，打几节，你怎么选择？
对，这个就是我我其实的疑问呐哈，这样子。那看 Cable Side 的话哈，我们大概顶多都二三三四四五这样做了哈。那其实我觉得很多 Backpan 的 Legion 呢，在这 d i g i t a l Score 里又是 Backpan 的 Legion， 很多都是那个 Disk 是空的。可是我是挖进去才知道哪些是 Disk 是空的，所以我大概现在看就是四五三四那那两节大概都是最恶的，那二三一二那个那两节哦，大概是 Compensation 的课，大概是。这样子，这所以只要这样倒回来，就是说也不一定 c o r o n a 要做的很漂亮啊。就是三四四五把有把它做得到的话，哈，其实病人 bedpan 大概都会很好，因为 first stage 完以后，他们大部分都很好这样子。那一二二三有时候挖一挖，哇，这个 disc 其实还蛮硬，还蛮紧的，好像我们还是多做一点这样子。这个有个更新院骨科郭医师，呃，有两个问题，第二个是针对更新院周主任的。因为我们最近在做那个摆脱 endoscopy T D fusion 哈，那我们也在尝试做 unilateral 的那个 fusion。你在什么样的 indication 你会不赞成用 unilateral fusion？ 好，这是第一个问题。那第二个问题是针对 Dr. King about your full endoscopy 啊 cage fusion。As I saw in your presentation, when you hit On the cage into the interbody space, you withdraw the scope. How do you make sure the cage does not incarcerate the nerve? Thank you. Yes, uh, that is very very important question. But uh, I already mentioned that. Uh, firstly, I'm ducking the walking channel because a walking channel is not around. The walking channel have a one side some. Uh, uh, deepest point, longer point, and the first insert. Uh, the longest point to the discal space and the rotation to the jura. There is a protection of the jura, and then insert the cage. After insert the cage into the discal space, and uh, uh, there is a confirming the uh, safety of the uh, not incarceration because uh, the uh, longer uh, walking channel uh, already in, uh, insert into the discal space because there is confirm the safety. And uh, after then, limit can possible, and the rotation is possible. 呃，回答那个郭主任问题啊。一般我这个在单侧症状的病人哈，那我大概就是 grade two 以上，我都还是敢用那个<咳>那个 unilateral 的一个 fixation 哦。可能甚至说三节、四节以上 degenerative scoliosis 都可以，因为我的术式是采取那用那个 TMK 机，我的那个前面固定的非常的扎实，所以。一般这种 case 都可以。那什么时候我会考虑摆 lateral？ 就是说，你怕去我这个那个整个回复那个 reduction 不是很好，就是 cage 打 cage 如果打进可以卡得很紧，我基本上我都敢用那个单车的固定。那有些是合并有对侧要多节做减压的时候，我会后面再合并再打钉子。那我现在大概百分之六十以上的这个病人，如果说这种单节的，我就是从对侧做过去。那很多节的话，大概就到最后是开窗，不要。不要让这个这个手术减压的时间浪费太多，所以基本上那个用单车固定的的这个 case 还是比较多，还是这样。呃 ，Is there any question? I have a question for uh Dr. Kim. That you when you remove do the laminotomy for decompression, you use the uh, high-speed bird to remove the bone to accomplish the decompression. But uh, when we do the mini uh, TD4, when we do the open surgery, we harvest the, the laminotomy chips for as bone graft to put inside it in the, into the disc space. Uh, what, how can we can we harvest the bone from the bone chips in the endoscopic surgery? Or if not, what kind of a bone graft will you use? Yes, that was also a very good question. Uh, before uh, starting the endoscope fusion surgery, that is uh, also my worry. You know, how can take a bone chip and how can make a bone uh, fusion uh, fusion in spite of the uh, some allograft? But uh, now this, uh, I have so many cases. Uh, I already uh, believe that the fusion is success because I already mentioned there have uh, two points. One point is the. Uh, uh, end plate preservation and the second point is the 3D printing cage. And also, I use the, uh, I, I, if it possible, I hope to preserve the inferior article process and superior article process by one piece and 
they can take a bone chip, but uh, that is not sufficient because uh, I use the DBM, uh, by the, uh, that is not orthographed, that is allograft. Anyway, uh, after inserting the 3D print, print KG, I already uh, uh, checking the three, uh, six months follow up CT, and they're all uh, fused very well. Don't worry. Can I ask uh, one question for the, that Professor Ito? About the, you show a case, very interesting. The decompression effect is progressing, improving, even after the indirect uh, decompression. Can you explain what kind of the possible mechanism for the progression, I mean the, the, uh, the, the stenosis keep improving? You know, my question, you show one case. Uh, the, uh, the longer the follow up, the, decompre the stenosis uh, become more improved after the, de the indirect decompression. You show one case. Probably you, told you know what my question is? <laughs> Sorry, more Sorry. Show, show oh. the okay. question. Okay, because I show you, show you present a case after the indirect decompression. And then you show the decompression, the previous stenosis become better after immediately after the after surgery. But one year later or a couple of years later, the longer the follow up, the de the stenosis getting more improved. What kind of the possible mechanism to to explain this kind of the the the, the situation? Oh, uh, direct decompression is uh, recovery very soon. However, a little uh, fusion, fusion is uh, uh, no make uh, to uh, symptoms. So that's the, uh, uh, sorry, to explain to in English <laughs> difficult. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, thank you. That's a very interesting phenomenon. So we, have, we will see the, in the follow up. Okay, I think the, I have to close the section because uh, there's another. Okay, thank you for every speaker in this symposium. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> 厂商朋友也都可以一起合照我们一起坐中间中间这一排貴賓們我們先往中間這一排坐我們請大家各位先進貴賓我們就先就坐我們坐前面一點啦這樣拍照比較好看這邊這邊
好，那我们紧接着开我们的会员大会哈。开会呀、啊。呃，各位有要这个用餐的哈，我们体袋里面也有这个餐券，可以去美食广场用餐。那我们第二会场跟第三会场也分别有这个 lunch symposium， 如果要去那边也有提供便当跟会议，再请大家这个。一步哈，那我们的会员朋友现在就要开始，开始这个，开始会员大会，那交给我秘书长潘建州主任。各位亲爱的脊椎微创医学会会员，大家好！这边二零一九年台湾脊椎微创医学会第八届会员大会现在开始，那请请各位参阅手上现有的的大会手册，简短的跟各位报告几件事项。那请看第八十页哈，八届这边是八第八届的工作日志，本届在这个这一届里面总共。主办、协办或者是参与了国内外的重要学术会议与活动，总共十次，请各位参与。那接下来，请各位看到下一页八十页是第八届第一次李监事的会议记录，请各位各位会员参与。那请各位翻到这个第八十二页，是第八届第二次李监事的会议记录，那请各位会员参与。收入收入支出的部分，参阅第三十八页，这是一百零八年度到至目前为止的收支，呃，收入支出状况，请各位参阅。那目前我们的资产负债表，截至一百零七年度的会计年度截止，记载在第八十四页，请参阅。八十五页记载的是第一百零七年度的收支预算，呃，收支决算表。请各位会员参阅，这样子。那另外这边简短的跟各位报告，这次呃在这一届所预所处处理的这个 t i s m i s 资讯分享平台，简短的跟各位做简短的示范。啊，可各位可以看一下这个前面的画面啊。对对，电脑。好，是谢谢。那这个部分之前之前曾经有 email 给各位会员，就是相关的连接跟网址。那我相信我已经有部分的会员已经有尝尝试去登录过。那这个是非常简单，把自己的账号密码登录之后，就会进入这个主画面。那目前来讲。在各位注意这个左边的部分，已经有总一个简易的这个分类，啊，包括包括不管是病例病例分享，然后重要的影音的精彩影音这些分享，那各位如果有呃觉得适合的一些资料啦，或者是这个要病例分享的这个报告或怎样，可以把它上传到这个资讯分享平台。那这边简短的跟各位报告到这边，谢谢各位。好的，那我们就可以依依序的这个来投票哈。然后再次提醒，我们的第二会场跟第三会场都有我们这个 lunch seminar， 啊，再请大家一步。那如果想要去美食广场用餐的，我们也有提供餐券。那一样再次提醒，我们提袋里面有摸彩券，再请大家记得投到摸彩箱里面。
。那我们第九届的这个里监事选举哈、哦，我们的结果会尽量会尽早开票出来，在这个我们的贵宾室里面开票进行开票。那最新出炉的这个第九届里监事，我们一样下午 coffee break 的时间，再请大家在贵宾室，我们要开第九届第一次的里监事会议。好、哦，再说一次，我们第九届。的这个第一次里监事会议会在下午 coffee break 的时间在贵宾室。如果要监票的同仁伙伴哈，我们一样会在一楼贵宾室的贵宾室的地方做开票。如果有要监票的会员朋友，先进们也可以一起来参与哈。再麻烦大家，谢谢。那我们的投票时间预计抓到一点，那我们大概一点十分准备进行开票。呃，各位会员先进朋友哈，我们大会晚宴在台中玉园花园酒店六点开始哈，这次也有请乐团表演跟摸茶，请大家尽量出席到场哈，谢谢。OK， 我们现在理事的选票跟监事的选票都进行封箱哈。那我们等一下一点十分的时候在贵宾室进行开票哈。啊，欢迎要监票的人可以到我们贵宾室来帮忙监票。好，那我们要把选票移走，移走了，谢谢。